Hey guys, Jess here from Knockout Print Shop, and today I have a video for you. This is legit gonna be a rambling video. I cannot tell you how much time this week I've tried to spend, or I've spent trying to figure out what to do a video on. I have a few different ideas um, for videos a little bit later in the month, but my brain has just been struggling to come up with content. So one of the ideas I had was to kind of do a 2020 lessons, like related to my planner. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to like put my planner here and talk. Cause I didn't feel like getting all prettied up for a, you know, talking head video. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to kind of talk about planner stuff and see where this goes. Because a lot of you have been giving me feedback and saying you don't mind my rambling videos. So that's good because this video is for you. So the first thing I want to talk about is setting up your new planner for the new year. This is going to be quick little tips of how I do things. There's not much done to my planner yet. I'm just like not ready to like dive into my goal stuff yet or do any like deep thinking on planning. So the bare minimum I've done so far in my new planner and don't mind this random fly that seems to have come into my house um, is get down a few things on my month view. So usually what I do, no matter what planner I'm using, this is my Moxie vertical. Just grab this one. I don't even know this is one that I did this in. This actually probably isn't, but <laughs> you can see where this is going. I put down monthly label dollar sign stickers to note the quarterly taxes that we pay being, um, what do you call it? Small business owners. So I put that in and I put in, I didn't do it in this planner, but I usually put down our holiday stickers for each holiday. Again, I grabbed the wrong planner. We can see where this is going. And then I also put birthday labels in. And those are like the three main things I do. I get irregular bills into my month views. I get holidays and special occasions and, um, what do you call it? Birthdays in probably by the end of this video, I'll go grab the other planner and show you what I've done, but it's not much more than this. And that's pretty much it. I have not gone through any of the goal setting stuff. I haven't done any brainstorming, any of that. I'm just, we've been so busy with getting out orders and things like that from black Friday, from cyber Monday, that we have not really had a lot of time to, for Matt and I to sit down and talk about business goals, for me to sit down and think about goals and all of that. So I'm not really ready for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So this is my old planner or my current planner from 2020. It's my Moxie Life Horizontal. So we're going to go through some things I've written on this random piece of paper that is irrelevant because it's like chicken scratch, but I'm just going to use that as a guide to talk about the things that I jotted down that I do feel like are lessons from 2020 that are somewhat taken from using my planner all year. And we'll just flip open and this will be like random weirdo story time as Jessica rambles through things. Okay. So this is this week guys. Here's the current week. I did a minimalist, just gray planner. I don't even really have this done. You could see, I'm just like getting things done. And if my planner looks like a hot mess, it's fine. Also, we've been having some lighting issues with the videos and the videos are pulling really pink. I'm hoping this video, we fixed it, but I don't know what's going on. So I apologize if everything looks like it has this pink hue. I won't know until after I go and edit it, if that is in fact the case, but there's that if you noticed that in the last video. All right. so. Lesson number one from 2020 is something that I've already kind of knew, but I continue to reiterate in all of my videos. And that is with anything and particularly goals, less is more. Now, if you watched last month's video on essentialism and goals, you know, kind of what I'm talking about. And truly for me, I have really begun to realize how important and essential this essentialism approach is. And that when I have too many things to think about, too many things on going on, too many goals going on, that I end up just feeling overwhelmed. Even if stuff gets gone, gets done, it doesn't necessarily feel like the most, there's just too much mental energy, too much emotional stress going on as I try to put my attention in too many different directions. So I think my lesson is when you're looking at goals, whether you're using the Moxie Life System, Inkwell System, Power Sheets, some other system that's out there, just really remember that systems are created for the general public, right? When you're a, a coach or somebody producing a, a product like a goal planner or a goal system, you have to think about all the situations, all the possibilities, everybody's unique life, and find a way to generalize a system to everybody. 
That's why you're going to see lots of space for each category and a lot of freedom in this process, you know, because like a lot of freedom and a lot of structure because they're trying to kind of make this generalized. Yet, and um, while that's good and understandable, because again, you can't make a product that's specific to one particular person, is that you have to remember that you have to, you have to, um, a generalized system is not the same as working with a one-on-one coach that's going to take their system, their concept, their philosophy, and tailor it to you, right? So when you're approaching whatever goal system you're using this year um, and when in the coming year for 2021 is thinking about less is more. I really believe that while many people, there's people in the camp of like, I can do have goals in every area and achieve them and move forward and make progress month after month. I personally believe that when we focus somewhere on one to three goals, we're a lot more productive. And I'm not saying you're not going to have tasks or things that need to get done in each month. Um, but I wouldn't call those goals. Right. Um, and again, maybe we're all, we each define goals in a different way. And maybe that's another lesson. Everybody defines a goal in a different way. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is my mantra as a coach, which is baby steps. I'm trying to think if there's something in here that I can kind of show that visually. I mean, you can see here on Sunday, every Sunday in November, we worked on our forest. We have about two and a half to three and a half acres that are not cleared and it's forest. And we don't have the money to pay somebody thousands of dollars to clear it for us. So we spend a couple hours, at least once a week in the summer, it was more slowly but surely chipping away at this tiny piece by tiny piece, sapling by sapling, tree by tree. And I think that's a really good way to kind of explain this metaphor with goals is that we need baby steps. We have to take things small, tiny pieces at a time. Oftentimes people are like, I set my weekly action step to, you know, I want to improve my health, right? Like that's a, that's a super popular goal that we're, that many people take on every year. And their thing is, I'm going to sleep eight hours. I'm going to go to the gym three times a week. I'm going to cut out this and do that. And they set all these goals. Well, that's great. Those action steps are great. And the problem is that's too many things at one time. Sometimes you have to scale back so far to baby steps that it almost feels like if that, that action feels useless, like it's not going to make a difference. But the reality is when we take little tiny steps and we continue to do them day over day, week over week, month over month, that thing becomes ingrained and part of our lifestyle and effortless and automated. So we don't have to think about it anymore. And then we can add on a new thing. The problem is we try to do too much too fast. So if you're somebody that maybe is approaching 2021 and you improving your health is kind of your general goal, pick one small, tiny thing to work on and work on it and work on it and work on it until you get to the point where you, it's almost effortless and then add on a new thing. Is it going to be slow? Yes. Are you going to see all of this visible progress really fast? No, but I guarantee if you do it that way over time, months and months and months and years and years and years, you have transformed your lifestyle. But most of us cannot do that by biting off more than we can chew. So baby steps, that's just like my ride or die mantra for things in anything, finances, health, life, goals, all of that, small, small, small steps. Now, some things in life with your goals are not necessarily habitual. Maybe they're one-time action steps, but even then, when you look at big goals, maybe you have starting a business and you know there's 70 million things you need to do to start a business, pick one little thing and do it. Then pick the next little thing and do it. You have to break it up into tiny pieces. Okay, so that's lesson number two. Um, this is a, another piece, lesson three, that I've always thought about and just wanted to kind of reiterate, and it, it becomes... Um, illustrated in my planner spread is where you spend your time and money is what you value. So when I look at this particular spread for November, where I started to write like my highlights down, the color coding is a little off because I have some overlap here with these categories, but it's very easy to see when you do something like this, or maybe you go into your planner and you're tracking your time, you're doing a time log or you have a scheduler, or you're starting to look at your to do's and the things that you did get done and the things that you didn't get done. And it's kind of one of those hard, like in your face realities where truly where we spend our time, where we prioritize, where we do get things done is typically expresses what we value. 
or and and that might be like sometimes a not so great reality check it's like if you're spending a lot of time um in an area where you're like oh that's not the best use of my time or i don't feel good about the fact that this is really showing what's important to me is that i am watching a lot of tv well then it's like shifting the values and it's shifting your time and it's got to be a slow process again but really looking at where you spend your money and where you spend your time will tell you a lot about what's important to you, what's your priorities. And it may or may not, I guess I should say that, what's important to you and where's your priorities. It may or may not align with your values because a lot of times there can be a misalignment, right, between what we truly believe we value and where we're spending our time, energy, and money. And I think when you look at your planner, you get this like, typically, if you've been using it, a rude awakening. You're like, okay, well, clearly I spend a lot of time doing home chores or I'm doing um, what is that word? Um, oh, what is those, that word? Like tasks that don't like low level tasks. I can't think of the word. Um, and I'm not making time for health or money, um, or different things, you know, family relationships, whatever. So your planner sometimes, as you look back, maybe you do weekly reflections, maybe you're just flipping back, you're looking at something, maybe you do an activity where you're using your month to track an important thing that happened each day or a highlight, or maybe you've got a schedule or something like that. Or um, There's evidence in your planner to show you where your priorities are and taking a look at that and going, is that aligned with my values is a good exercise. So as you're like approaching 2021, I keep saying, yeah, 2021, you know, I'm not a big flip through my planner, like full scale where I go all the way back and look, but it can be a good exercise to look back and go, all right, where did my time go? Look through your budget, look through your checkbook. Where did my money go? It's very enlightening. Okay. So that's lesson number three. Number four, sometimes your planner needs to be functional, not pretty. I could flip through spreads that originally I thought were going to be like, this is going to be so cute. I'm going to spend time putting my stickers down, doing my highlighting. You know what though? Honestly, sometimes some of my, my most productive weeks have been when my planner looks like a mess. There's, you know, I didn't put a sticker here. I don't use stickers. I'm using pen and jacked it up. It looks kind of hand drawn and weird. So I think when you're doing planner stuff, now there's a lot of people that are in the planner world that this is a tremendous creative outlet for them and they get so much joy from expressing their creativity in their planner maybe they're doing it for memory keeping maybe they like to draw a hand letter they like just the aesthetic of it kind of almost that scrapbooking vibe they get to do this as an adult and using this as a creative outlet for a lot of people that's one of the main purposes for planning and that's great then there's other people like myself where it's a little bit of a creative outlet throwing some stickers down and playing around with my online or highlighters in my like not so beautiful way and it's got to be functional. This has to be functional. I do like using stickers and obviously we make stickers so for different things to organize my spreads and bring attention to different things. But really guys, when you get into the planner world or if you're in the planner world and you see other people that, I mean, believe me, I have planner crushes on people that have just phenomenally beautiful planner spreads. Um, but I have to remember, like, it doesn't matter as long as it's serving the, my purpose for me is to help me get things done, to get my thoughts down on paper, to get tasks down so I don't forget things. So functional does not always have to be pretty. Pretty does not always have to be functional. Your planner can serve whatever purpose you want it to serve. Um, just don't get caught up on comparing your use of your planner, the aesthetic of your planner to other people. We're all unique little butterflies or snowflakes. <laughs> um, we're unique in the fact that we all have different purposes for our planner and have different needs and things like that. Okay, that's number four. Number five, I just said that I'm not a big, like, let me flip through the whole entire year of my planner. I don't often kind of look back. Although sometimes it's interesting to see spreads and how things evolved and if you made changes to how you did things. And But I'm not a big flip thrower but I am a big fan of people doing reflections and I myself do them. I do mostly, I'm pretty consistent at doing my monthly reflection, which in the Moxie is built in and then using the notes and reflections page to kind of do a quick little inventory of what worked, what didn't work, lessons, adjustments, and gratitude. Like that's kind of my jam, those few topics. Um, you can see when I was a player around making it cute, sometimes it's not cute. Sometimes it is like this. But I think it's important if you are using your planner um, as a productivity tool, as a goal setting tool, then there's a lot of value in reflecting. Reflecting really helps you think about 
where you're spending your time, the strategies you're using to map out your planner if they're working, the habits and routines you're building in your life if it's working, maybe you set out to reach a certain goal in a particular week or you know achieve a certain action step, go through the week you didn't do it and you're looking at, well, what didn't work? Well, I said I wanted to do this and I didn't do it. Well, why didn't I do it? What got in my way? I think if we're not taking, if, again, if you're using for this planner for a productivity or goal setting purpose, reflection to me is essential because you have to be constantly assessing what you're doing so that you can make the necessary changes to continue to move forward. Maybe you put like, I'm going to work out three times a week and you look at your plan and you're like, I totally didn't do that. You have to ask your question, yourself, why? Why didn't that happen? What got in my way? What do I need to change in order to make that happen? Do I need to tweak that goal, my approach, things like that? You have to be, this process needs to evolve. You know, it's hard to do this as a lot of times as one person. You know, to ask yourself all these questions and have this dialogue with yourself can be difficult. Some people aren't, you know, they need that conversation, whether it's a coach or a counselor or a friend or a planner buddy, to ask those questions with. We don't always have that opportunity. Sometimes it's as simple as we got to get in a piece of paper and journal as much as we can. If you're somebody that struggles to do reflections solo, which is very common. I mean, I, I'm much better at talking through things myself. I like to have that dialogue to help me, my brain kind of free up and figure out what's going on. Um, maybe it's a good idea to get a coach, you know, get a counselor, find a, a group of people that are doing goal setting that are really honest with each other and can ask those tough questions and things like that. But being able to reflect is essential to improving um, your productivity as well as reaching your goals. Okay. I'm actually making pretty decent time for this ramble. What are we on to now? We are on to number six, which I wrote down was make time to look ahead and plan. Okay, so here's the thing, right? Like we have a planner, planner for a reason, to plan, typically meaning preemptively to plan ahead. Now, not everybody does it that way. Some people use this more of a, as a retroactive planning. They just like to maybe have a running to-do list sitting on their desk and later they go back in and put things in. I used to do that. You can see videos past where I did some like, I think I called it retroactive planning or planning in reverse or something like that where I was just like doing things and later I'd be like I'm going to take some time to get creative and like do my planner spread okay so we're not talking about that kind of planning we're talking about using your planner as a tool to plan ahead be more productive get things done all of that the key to doing that is setting the time to do it and realizing that that has value right so like you have to go if I'm going to use this tool to plan ahead, whether that's for your business, for work, for family, for some certain goal. You have to dedicate time to doing the planning, sitting in a quiet place and do the planning. Open your planner, look at what's going on in your life that month, what obligations you have, time sensitive things, what tasks have to get done this month, projects, things like that, and then planning all of that out and planning around it, breaking things down, planning ahead for um, possible, um, obstacles that could get in your way. No, you can't plan everything. Life happens, shit happens, and your things can get in your way. But planning ahead, looking and making time for it. If we're not doing that, the planner's not going to necessarily serve the same purpose. I think there's a few things. If you're planning for productivity or, or goal setting, you have to make time to plan. You have to break things down and make the steps achievable. And you have to reflect and tweak. And if you're not doing those three things, you're often going to find yourself writing things, things transferring from month to month that don't get done, um, feeling like you're never getting things done, putting too much on your plate. If you're not making the time to stop yourself, pause, plan, reflect, look at the road ahead. I'm not talking like years. You don't have to do like, what's my five-year plan? I'm talking like next month, next week, the next day. Some people don't like to look that far ahead. They're like, okay. I've got my planner open, right? And I'm like, oh, that's my little hand-drawn one we're going. What? It's Monday. I have my list down. What am I going to do on Tuesday? Okay. I know this week I have to get this one thing done. Do I have time tomorrow? Realistically, do I have time tomorrow to get it done? So sometimes you got to take it one day at a time. That's totally fine. Not everybody can look at the whole week ahead. Some people can look at the whole week, but they can't look at the whole month and vice versa. But if you're planning things, projects, goals, uh, stuff like that, you want to ideally spend some time looking at your calendar, looking at your planner and assessing how that thing is going to get done in relation to your other life obligations. Okay. 
That's number six. Number seven is track and review. If you've watched any of my other videos in the past on fitness stuff in particular, you know I am a big fan of tracking habits and tracking some metrics, for lack of a better word, and that way you have a, for some people that little check mark is like accountability, um, but then you have a, um, in pen and paper, you can see how you're doing, something to look at and assess your progress. What I often find when people are tracking and habit tracking, they will have habit trackers that are 20 things long and they'll track and they'll never go back and look at it. Here's the problem with that. Like if you're, you're like, for me, this little habit tracker down here, you can see I have things that are already automated down here. I do these almost every single day in this order. Get up at six, do our farm chores, check wine ad, check my emails, check social, and write my daily highlight at the end of the day. Like this is just like automated stuff. I like I'm just a nerd and I like checking this stuff off. I don't necessarily go back and review and see if I've done it unless I'm like flipping through my planner or looking to set the next week up and I'm like, I totally did not do that all week. What's going on that I didn't do this thing all week and is it still serving me? So my point is, even when you're doing like more of an automated, just like that daily checklist, it is, a, it is a good idea to glance at it and see how consistent you're being and if you need to make changes. Now, that's for daily tasks. If you're doing a new habit, you're trying to read every day, you're trying to exercise a certain amount of times a week, you're trying to um, uh, plan your meal, I don't know, like thinking, whatever your habit is. If you're going through and you're making the time to track it, the only way tracking becomes in truly effective is when you go back and you review it because Otherwise, you don't know your consistency. And you again, here's another idea with reflection. You don't know what is getting in your way um, and if you need to make changes. Let's say I have a task that I'm going to get up every day at 6 a.m. And I just put it. Sometimes I check and I just put it and sometimes I check it and I never go back and look at it. Or let's say there's times when I checked it once, I put it down again, I checked it once that week. Clearly, this getting up at 6 a.m. thing isn't working, but I'm not taking the time to go back and look at that. And that's not going to get me any closer to my goals. Maybe the 6 a.m. thing is here because it's part of a, well, let's fly, a bigger goal to um, improve my morning routine, to take time to um, read or meditate. Like this may be part of a bigger health, wellness, life goal. If I'm not going back and reviewing my progress, the percent, my score, right? Like out of 30 days, I did this five well, that says something. If these things are important to track, if we want them to be useful, if we want tracking to be useful, we have to go back and look at our score essentially. So that way, not from a judgmental, I need to beat myself up because I didn't do it, but more from a, how is this working for me? Is it working? Is it not working? So one thing with the Moxie that's been a struggle for me all year has been having this weekly habit tracker. I do miss in my inkwell having my half sheet insert where I could track full 30 days and transfer that to each week because I liked seeing my progress for the whole month at a glance right there. So this has been good for just daily tasks, but when it comes to actual habits, I haven't really been working on any new habits that this year, so that's okay. Um, I think it's really good to look at your monthly score, right? Like over 30 or 31 days, how consistent were you? 50% of the time, 10%, 100%. And that way you can see what's working and what's not working. You can see the theme here. I'm all about reflecting, analyzing, being strategic. If that's the purpose of your planner. Okay, so that was number seven. What is number... Okay, let's. I'm going to go to number nine. Okay, number nine lesson is repetition. There's times, if you've watched my goal videos, where I'm like, what am I doing? I just write down the same shit every month, the same goals every month. Am I really, is this helpful? Is this necessary? If you were to flip through my old videos, you'd see the consistency month over month. My monthly goals typically look exactly the same. And some of these things are more, less goals and more things to do that I need to get done, projects, tasks, whatever. And then I realized a couple of videos ago that that's fine. Repetition is key, just like I said, with baby steps and doing things consistently over time. The What you're doing, right, the things you're putting down, the things you're getting done, is technically your lifestyle. This is you're building a life, you're building a routine, this is what you do. So if you are continually writing the same things down and you're doing them, then you are building a lifestyle that ideally is related to maybe some bigger goals or the kind of life you want to live or your intention. So 
embrace the repetition is my goal or is my, my lesson is, is that there's a reason that I write down the same things every month and I check them off because that's the, this is my lifestyle. These are the things that are important to me. These are the things that I'm doing. Now, sometimes that repetition, if I'm writing things month over month and they're not getting done, that's where reflection comes in. I'm repeating and repeating. And maybe re repetition in that standpoint isn't necessarily working and I need to make a change as I'm carrying the same undone task, right, over every month. But if you're carrying over tasks that get completed every month, I think that's, again, evidence that these things are getting you closer to or continuing to maintain and enhance the current lifestyle you are trying to create or you continue to live. Um, and I think the other piece of this, which is kind of an offshoot, maybe not necessarily a piece of this, is what I was kind of alluded to in the, towards the beginning of the video is this idea of how you define goals. I have like a love hate with the word goals, you guys. I was actually like, I don't even, goals is like, I hate the word. I hate the pressure that comes with the word, the heaviness that comes with the word. I like to be like things I want to do, which is silly because am I kind of saying the same thing? Maybe the word goals sometimes stresses me out. And I think in, in the planner world, in my opinion, we've really had the shift um, from a couple of years ago to people focusing on more on goals, which is really great. You know, obviously we're using planners and a lot of us want to achieve things. But I think with that come, sometimes comes a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves. We see other people doing things. We need to fill all these categories. We need to do all this stuff. And sometimes it can become heavy and it can start to feel like there's a lot of pressure to do certain things. So I think you have to figure out what, where goal setting fits into your life and what goals mean to you. I've embraced for me the monthly goal sheet, in particular in my Moxie, and if I was using my Inkwell in the mission board and my weekly action steps, a lot of the times is more things I want to get done. Do some of these relate to maybe bigger annual goals? Sure, but I kind of approach it as, what are my routine things that I need to get every done every month? There's certain habits, routines, tasks that I need to get done related to work and home and finances. Those go down here and it serves as a checklist. And I don't have to have big lofty goals in every area. To me, it's just like things I want to get done. If there's a thing I've been talking to Matt about or talking about them, like, I really want to get this done. I want to try this. I want to do this. I want to work on it. I can put it down, but it doesn't have to necessarily have the weight of a goal. And if it doesn't get that done that month, it's okay that it's just a, again, a project, a thing. And if there's a couple months it goes by and it keeps hanging out on, on lists, maybe it's time to set it to the side. I can show you an example of that. So I think it was in October. Let's see. Um, okay. So we had some errors on our taxes for an, and we need to make an amendment with our accountant to our 2018 taxes. I put this on my, oh my God, it was from September. So I kept doing it. September, I put it down. Okay. Let's see if I put it in August. This, I want to illustrate a point here. So let me see. Oh my God, it was in <laughs> Point illustrated. Okay. Started in August. I was like, okay, Matt, we got to sit down and send our accountant, Jimmy, the numbers we already pulled for the amendment. Okay. We should do this before we start to get into the busy month of um, September. August started flying by. We, we started working on stuff and, um, I'm like, okay, let's do it in September. We need to get this done before we get really busy before the holidays. You can see went over October. We really should get this done. Oh shoot. We got this message. We got to change banks. We need a bank that's local. I should start researching banks. That was October. Okay. Oh, look, new bank, 2020 amendment, 2018 amendment, November. Both of those things went on November. Finally, last month I was like, okay, call the my accountant, what is my deadline for getting the 2018 amendments amended taxes done? He was like, 2022, you have time. I'm like, okay, fine. We will get this done when we send. Okay. I'm talking too long. My camera turned off. So let me go back. So I think where I left off was you can see it was in September, it, this same task. It was in October, this same tax task. And then finally in November, I was like, like I said, I called our accountant. I was like, when do we have to have this amendment to the taxes done? He said, not till 2022. I'm like, fine. We're too busy right now to deal with this. We do not have the mental capacity or the time to sit down and go through this. 
we will send in this amendment when we send in our 21, 2020 taxes in April. Totally fine. Then I was like, Matt, when do we have to change bank accounts by? It's getting to the end of the year. I don't want to muddy up any tax stuff. Let's wait till the next year. We don't have to do it till February. Okay, fine. We will leave this task to January of 2021. Fresh start for the new year. Don't need to keep this lingering. So my point is, what was my point? Oh my God, guys, I don't even know my point. I guess my point is, um, sometimes things are goals. Sometimes things are things that need to get done and it's okay to take things off your list. I don't know. I lost track of what that lesson was, but I think you get the point. Okay. We have two more lessons guys. And then I got to wrap this up because I, we're past 30 minutes at this point. Okay. So on this same topic, lesson number nine is your planner is a tool, not the solution. So I know a lot of you, a lot of us, we get totally um, excited when we see a new planner come out. Maybe it's a specific planner like a Moxie Life or an Inkle Press Gold Planner where it's like, this is, you know, this is the power sheets. This is the thing you need to figure your shit out and achieve your goals. Like this is the solution, right? That the planner is the solution. The system is the solution. And it's so easy to think I'm going to buy this thing and this is going to fix everything, right? Like we all fall victim to this. So why I want this, why this is a lesson I think for 2020 is that we need to realize, in my opinion, you may not agree, but this is my opinion, is that I, I think of my planner as a tool. The solution, this may be a tool to reach the solution. The solution to me is my execution, right? That's the hard part. We write all this shit down. It's like, how do I execute the task? I think that goes back to literally my lesson number two, which is baby steps. A lot of times people try to do more at once than they can realistically do, and then they get frustrated and they don't do it. So we have to start small. But I think this is one tool in the solution to achieving your goals, improving some area of your life, getting more productive, not forgetting things. But you can't just put things in here and think this is magically going to make things better, right? I can put all this shit in here, highlight it, sticker it, do all that. But if I don't take the time to open my planner, look at this reminder, finish book. Well, finish book is great, but I have to actually read book, which means I have to make time in my day, every day or a certain amount of days within this 31 day period to do that, right? Um, get pigs. We're buying three Cooney Cooney American guinea hogs for our farm. I have to go and research pigs, meet farmers, go there, get infrastructure. This, the planner helps me remember this is the goal for this month. This is a thing that needs to get done and there's steps related to it. Plan for 2021 for work, for a business. This is on here as a reminder, but I have to open the planner and go, okay, I know that's something I want to get done. This is how many days I have left. When can me and Matt sit down and do that? and make the time. So remember, I think the lesson is guys, buy whatever planner you think is going to work, whatever system, if you're a goal planner, you think is going to work for you, do the system, embrace it, try it, follow the structure. And remember, this is a tool. It's a tool for productivity, a tool for goal setting, a creative tool. It can be, it can serve whatever, whatever tool you want it to be, but it is a tool. And the solution for most people, right, is to use this tool to reach an end goal, but it involves the execution of what you've mapped out in here. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay. Last but not least is make your planner and whatever system you are using work for you. This kind of takes us full circle, everybody. So like I said, I have finally embraced the fact that I don't need to fill out everything and I can leave things blank and nothing's going to happen. The world's not going to come to an end. And I can take a great system like the Moxie Life system, go through the goal setting if I choose to, and use it how I want to. I don't have to follow it verbatim to the T for it to be a beneficial tool to me. So I think that's the thing is you really have to make it work for you. You don't have to have pretty spreads. You can use just pen if you want. You don't have to even buy stickers and I sell stickers. <laughs> Not even trying to say shameless plug and buy the stickers. Um, make it work for you. Don't be afraid to make it messy. Um, if you go through a system, you know, maybe you go through, it's so interesting to see how planner spreads change. Um, you go through a system and you're doing this process and you're getting your scores 
and take these scores and do with them what you want. You know, Moxie Life System does have you spend a little bit of attention on each area. Maybe you only want to spend attention on one area this year. You know, that's okay. There's not like, there's no rules. You can do what you want that works for you. Maybe you go through the Moxie Life Assessment, you go through the Inkwell Press or Power Sheets goal thing, and you've got a few areas that you've assessed that are need a little love. And you're like, you know what? I know myself. If I try to do all things, not going to work. Even though this thing says to focus on all these things, I'm going to pick health and I'm going to pick one little thing, All right? I know I can handle two focuses. Make it work for you. Whether you're using it, if you're using a goal system, make the goal system work for you. If you don't give a shit about goals and you just want to use your planner to write things down and make sure you, you know, do your basic life things. And that makes you, this helps you just remember those things. Use your planner or whatever planner you're going to use to work for you. That is shameless plug here. One good thing about planner stickers, if you're into that element of planning is that you do, it does allow you to kind of customize your planner, whatever planner you use to really work for you, for your needs. So you can focus on what you need to focus on. Okay. For not having a planning topic idea or a video topic idea, I sure did lots of chatting on this guy. So I hope that was helpful guys. Those are my, I don't know, 10 lessons I've learned, 10 things I'd like to share with you from using my planner and reflecting and doing all of that from 2020. Let me know if any of that resonates with you. Maybe you have some different lessons you've learned from going through this epic year of 2020, using or not using your planner. What lessons have you learned? Let me know in the comments. I do have a cool video coming out soon. I collabed with one of my friends who is a graphic designer and we are releasing a free downloadable uh, 2020 reflection workbook. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. So there, I think my next video or the video after that will be on that. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you are not on our email list, there is a link in the description and that will be how you will get access to this when it goes live. It's not live yet. Um, yeah, so that's it. Hope you guys are doing well and enjoying the last month of 2020. Thanks for listening to my ramble. Let me know how you're doing and I will see you in the next one.